now and then a huge transformational merger that's been in the works for ages just blows up. And all the players involved end up in disarray. That's what happened two months ago with the gigantic $35 billion merger of equals between advertising titans on the common publicist. In May, after nearly 10 months of planning, the deal fell through. And while Omnicom just reported a decent quarter, Publicis seems downright dazed and confused, posting disappointing numbers today, blaming the miss on the fact that they were distracted by the failed merger. But within the disarray among the world's second and third largest ad agencies, I think a clear winner may be emerging, a company that's taking advantage of the confusion after the failed merger. I'm talking about the inner public group of companies, IPG. That's the fourth largest advertising agency on earth in an industry where the top four players control most of the business. Really, IPG is an agglomeration of advertising agencies, including McCann, which you might be familiar with if you've ever accidentally found yourself watching Mad Men while channel surfing for mad money. If an easy mistake to make, the resemblance between myself and John Hamm is indeed uncanny. He's told me that himself. Now, IPG just reported yesterday, and while the earnings were in line, the revenues came in higher than expected. Management gave an improved outlook for the full year. I like where this business is headed. IPG is also incredibly shareholder-friendly. Past three years, 21% of the shares have been bought the a huge buyback. Don't take it from me. Take a closer look with Michael Roth, chairman and CEO of Interpublic Group of Companies. Learn more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? Have I'm a well. seat. Okay, on the conference call, which was really terrific, Thank and it's you. July 18th, um, there's a line in it. We just got to go right there because I thought it was really amazing. You said that it's kind of interesting. If you think about it, this is the first time digital has exceeded network spend. Yes. This was the quarter, the crossover. Yes, it's, uh, well, everyone saw it coming, and, right. the, and the growth of digital has been enormous. Uh, what's interesting there, historically, has always been a disconnect between viewership and eyeballs and, and advertising spend. And finally, uh, digital has caught up and, and uh, we saw it cross over. So. Is it uh, easy to measure the return on investment for digital? It's always easier, certainly compared to, to TV, right. uh, because it it's, it's, it's has a direct correlation. We have tools and research that accounts for it, and, and that lends itself to uh, better ROI calculations. Now, we also know that, uh, as you, again, quoting you, the upfronts were kind of weak this year. Uh, is that because of digital, or is, as we hear, it could change, things could get better in the later market? Yeah, let's, let's not uh, kid ourselves. Uh, TV is still a very powerful okay. force, okay? And yeah, it was a little bit soft in the upfronts. I suspect we'll see a stronger scatter, uh, because in, in any integrated offering, TV still plays an important role. Um, but uh, I'm not sure whether digital was the reason for it or not. Okay, but, now, uh, well, when we think of digital, are we talking about, say, the Google carpet bomb, the programmatic buying? Are we talking about Facebook and, and Google? Are we actually even including Twitter, which some people say shouldn't be included among those? Well, I, I think it's all of it. What's interesting, the way we approach digital, if you will, is it's embedded in everything we do. Our PR businesses right. have digital capabilities. Our experiential marketing has digital capabilities. So digital is, is part of our DNA. So okay. we, we, we refer to it as everything, in part of what we do. Now, when I watch Mad Men, I'm always amazed when someone gets a big win. It yeah. really does matter immediately, the bottom line. You recently won Microsoft. I, that's got to be a huge piece of business, particularly with a new CEO. And I have to imagine that the new CEO has said over and over again, including the call uh, on, the comp, on, on the earnings, bold, bold, bold. So are the instructions to just be as bold as possible, or they just turn it over to you and say, listen, re-image us? What, is it, what does it mean to get that account? Well, what it means is we have the talent and resources on a global basis to deliver what the client is looking for. It's very specific in terms of what, when you receive an RFP, in terms of what the clients are looking for. So we have to show our expertise in the marketplace. We have to show our global presence. And frankly, we have to show the creative talent that meets their objectives. So it includes everything that we do. Well, I mean, does it mean that we're not going to hear those commercials that have like a, a popular song at the end? Does it mean that, that, uh, that you'll hear the name Xbox more and Windows less? No, what, the way we approach it and what, what the client was looking for is a full integrated offering. Okay. So it includes digital, it includes everything. And, and frankly, that's where we move the needle. Now, Pizza Hut's really stumbled. I see you, uh, Deutsch, our friend Donnie Deutsch, <laughs> you just got that account. Is that one again where they're just saying, listen, help us? You figure it out? Uh, you know, I think what happens is whenever uh, there's a, a review, something's wrong with uh, the existing agencies that are servicing the client. They have a need. Right. And, and uh, we've been working with young brands uh, uh, in terms of Taco Bell as well. Right. And so we have a good relationship. They have a lot of confidence in our ability to deliver. And uh, it was reflected in the assignment. 
Okay, now, after the deal broke down between the two others, Mary Gabelli comes on TV all the time, CBC says, both of these companies are clearly going to try to make acquisitions going forward, and all eyes are on Interpublic. Fair statement? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, since uh, our new management team some nine years ago took over at IPG, Everyone has been watching us right. in terms of what's going to happen. And, and, you know, our marching orders are very clear. Build shareholder value. And what we do is we focus on our clients, we focus on execution, right. and we've, we've been building shareholder value. So everyone looks at what we've done, our, right. our global footprint, our, our talent, our expertise. And, you know, if there's someone out there who thinks that right. uh, they can either do better or prepared to put a very attractive offer on the table as a public company, we're obligated to, to right, look at it. Right, right, you got to do that. That's but, true. but you know, we, we, we don't need to do a transaction. Okay. Uh, also, just again, because we're so focused on digital, I mean, right. do you think more money went to, from your account? Went, uh, and what ratio, Facebook to Twitter this quarter? You know, I don't have that specific, but Facebook is obviously a the very dominant, big, right? yeah, of course. And right. la last question, when you... What do you do? You try to get it so that we think of an ad because we all joke here every <laughs> Wednesday. Mike, 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 Hump Day. I mean, is that a <laughs> win for you when people mention? Like, when I hear people mention an ad campaign, that's a win when they don't even just part of the parlance, right? You know, I don't care what you say about me as long as you're talking about me. So, what you see in Hump Day was a Geico commercial, and a Martin agency uh, has been working with Geico for years in terms of the work that they do. We're very proud of the work they do. And when they get something like that, which becomes part of the everyday uh, uh, phrases and languages, we're very proud of it. Does Warren Buffett, does he check off on him? Does he see him ahead of time? <laughs> uh, I don't know the answer to oh, that. You know, <laughs> oh, I gotta believe you like the Mike, Mike, Mike. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, this is it's sensational to have you, and thank you for being so candid about the takeover, about the Microsoft, everything. And it's, I'm glad we have this relationship because your company's a terrific company. You've done a thank lot you. for shareholders. Thank I you so much. It. Great thank turnaround you. by you. Terrific. That was Michael Roth, the chairman and CEO of Interpublic Group. We have money's back after the break.